Hi, welcome to another episode of Webcam Sessions. This week we're going to learn the intro to Brown Eyed Girl and learn how it uses major and minor thirds to create that sound of the intro. So let's go ahead and dive into playing it. We're going to take our middle finger on our fretting hand, place it on the third fret of the E string, and then our index finger here, place it on the second fret of the A string. So we have three on the E and two on the A. Now we're going to play those two strings together. You can use your thumb going down over both strings, or you can pluck it with your uh, thumb and index or whatever com combination of fingers you'd like. I'm gonna use just my thumb to play through uh, for the sake of this exercise. So I'm gonna play those two together. Now I'm going to move to the next one. And when I do this, I'm going to slide my ring finger to be on the fifth fret of the A string and use my index finger here to go to the third fret of the A string. So we have five with the ring and three with the index. Right. So starting from the top there, using my middle and index, then my ring and index. Now from here, I'm going to take those two and slide them up two frets. So it should be at seven and five now and play that. So it goes. And now from here, it's going to go back down. We slide back down to five and three and then slide back down to three and two. Now here's a really important thing to note. When you're playing this, there's multiple right ways to finger it. The way I just showed you is very efficient because it kind of uses one finger per fret as we're hiking up. You'll notice that we're not stretching our fingers out at all. But oftentimes for people, it's easier to just use these two fingers and essentially stretch and collapse them as they're moving. So they start the same way. And then instead of using the ring finger here, they might just stretch those two fingers out. So middle's on five and index is on three. And as you slide up, you keep that stretch going so it's only two fingers used. Now, there's, there's some drama here. And what that is is when I teach it, I actually like to show people to do it this way because I find it to be more efficient. It's much easier in the long term to make sure that you're building up speed with this because the fingers are moving only as much as they have to. However, because I'm primarily self-taught, this is one of those things that I sort of had a bad, um, you know, bad efficiency with because while I was learning, I was using these two fingers going up and down just like so. So it's a little bit of a do as I say, not as I do, but go ahead and do as I do if you'd like and if it's easier for you. Um, so the two ways of doing it are this, or both are going to be okay. So that's the first half of it, and the rhythm should sound something like this. All right? So that was with the two different fingering options. The next part, second half, we're going to move all the way up to eight on the E string and seven on the A, and we're gonna do the exact same thing, only starting here at eight and seven. So we're going to play the eight and seven, then we're gonna move up to 10 and eight, and then 12 and 10, and then 10 and eight, and then eight and 10. So, or, right? So it starts down here, or, and then it goes up here, or, right, with fingering options. So, Then it goes back down, does it again? So we've got three total sections there, right? First one down here, second one's up here, third one down here. And then the last part to sum this up, we're going to use our index finger, play on the second fret of the E string, and play the open A with it. And then we're going to play the two on the E, and then use the middle finger on three of the E, and then play the open A. So it's... So the whole thing should sound something like this. And that's me using the fingering that I originally learned. But again, you can also use the ring finger. So trying it both ways is a really good idea, just because the more ways you're able to play something, the better, right? So let's talk a little bit about what it is we're doing here. Uh, these are examples of what we call thirds. Now, a third is essentially going to be looking at our musical alphabet, which are the letters A through G, and then restarting. 
If we start on any one note, we skip a note and go to the next one, it's the third. Because if we think about starting on C, and C is my one, that would make D my two, and it would make E my third. So the third of C is E. The third of G would be B, G, A, B. The third of A would be C, A, B, C, right? Now, as we're talking about this right now, we're not actually denoting whether it's major or minor or anything like that. We're just talking about the third of a note as another note, right? It's going to be ignoring sharps and flats. But when we're playing music, we're using things like sharps and flats. And so this is going to incorporate what we call a major third and a minor third. Now, a major third on our ukulele looks something like this. The first one that we played. That's the G note to the B note. It's called a major third because the distance between them, going from the G up to the B, is going to be four steps or four frets on our ukulele. If we look at the G note and I go up four frets, one, two, three, four, I get to the seventh fret. And that seventh fret is the same note as the second on the A, which is a B note. So anytime that you have four frets of distance between them, it's going to be a major third. And this shape will always have those four frets between them. It's just using a different string to play the other note, right? Kind of hard to play the uh, three and the seven together when they're on the same string. So that's why it uses the other string to help. Now a minor third is going to be three steps instead of the four. Right? So if I look at my A note here on five, if I were to go up three frets now, I'd get to a C note, which is going to be our minor third of A. So the C note I can instead play on three of the A, so I can play them together. And that shape here with now one fret between them, so you see how it goes five and three with that space between, is an example of a minor third. So anytime that we see no frets between, but they're just adjacent, it's going to be a major third. And anytime we see one fret between, it's going to be a minor third. So really we're playing minor th or major third, minor third, minor third, minor third, major third when we play this. And when we move up, major third, minor third, minor third, minor third, major third. Now what's really cool about this is if you know what key you're in, as long as you're playing both of the notes within the key, you can create a really cool sound that sounds like it's supposed to be there. So if we're playing in the key of C, let's say, where we have no sharps or flats, as long as whatever note we're playing on the E string, whatever note we're playing on the A string doesn't have a sharp or flat, we can keep moving up as we do this and create these really cool sounds. It also actually includes the song, Let It Be. If you play thirds, you can get that intro sound. Ooh, where am I? <laughs> Gotta find where I am. Right? You can get that sort of sound. It's really quite neat to be able to play with those thirds. So what I was doing there is I was just starting all the way up at 13, which is an F note, and 12, which is an A, and that's a third apart. Right? So the theory behind this is essentially trying to learn to count up to the thirds and knowing that there are two primary types, a major third and a minor third. With the major third, being four frets above and the minor third being three frets above. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot a message down below within the comment section. I'm trying to make sure I answer whatever questions you guys might have. And uh, I will see you next week for another episode of Webcam Sessions.